To get started on this metamorphosis animation project, you should already have three random objects ready to go. Now these will either be assigned to you or you can pick them yourself or some combination thereof. In addition to this, we're going to be animating a transition from one object to another and I'm giving you some ideas for how you can transition all of those. So these can be picked and choose from however you see fit. Now when you pick your objects, as far as style goes, there's a variety of different ways you can draw the same thing. Here I've got my three objects that I've already drawn off using Adobe Illustrator. You can see that I've kept mine relatively simple, so simple shapes or simple little lines. It can be a line drawing. It could be realistic. I'll leave it up to however you see fit to draw it. Additionally, we're going to be doing all the animation using Adobe Animate, but that doesn't mean you can't use Adobe Illustrator to work out your design. As a matter of fact, I'll show you how you can take a, a drawing or a design from Illustrator and bring it into Animate in this tutorial. Once you get your three objects ready to go, I'm going to jump into Animate and let's create a new document. Now the size of your document can be whatever you feel comfortable working in, but I'm going to keep mine at a full HD, so it's 1920 by 1080 with a frame rate of 24. And we'll say Create. If you want to change the background of your document, you can go to your Properties panel, choose the Document sub-panel, and then locate the stage color. From here, you can pick and choose some predefined colors, and in my case, I'm just going to make it a dark gray. Before we get started bringing in each of our objects, we need to work through our storyboard. So on my timeline, I'm going to rename layer 1 as my storyboard layer. From here, I can work out the timing that I want for each of my objects to last. Remember, it needs to last at least 5 seconds. Now since I have three different objects, let me show you how I'm going to break down my timeline. This will actually make it a little bit simpler. I'm going to start off with the shape of a heart. So I'll just draw it off up here to give you an idea. And this will be for one second. So for an entire second, it's going to go, and then it's going to turn into a tree, and then it's going to turn into a little hand from there. So this will be one second. At the end of one second, we want it to do some sort of transformation. That'll be my second second. Then we want it to show the tree for an entire second on three. Then it'll do some other little transformation. And then it will show the hand for another second. So here's all of the different breakdowns that should be on my timeline. So I'm going to bring my timeline down just a bit. And I know I need to have five key frames or five key moments that happen from here. So I'm going to go down to my timeline and for now I'm just going to choose the one second mark and I'm going to insert a blank keyframe. That way I know it's completely starting to change. Let's do the same at two. Insert a blank keyframe, three, four, and five. Now there's nothing sacred about these particular times. This just tends to work out really well when you've got three objects and two seconds in between each one of those. So if I turn on my onion skinning, we can see the starting point. This first little time frame is going to show just my heart. Then at one second we're going to show a transition until this second second will be a tree. And again, this doesn't have to look proper, it just gives me an idea. And then by the third second, it's going to do a transition, and then it's going to reach this fourth second. So choosing the fourth keyframe, it will turn it into a hand. And again, it's just a storyboard, so it doesn't have to look perfect. All the way down, and then... And just to avoid some confusion, I'm going to go back to my first keyframe. I'll turn off my onion skinning, and so we're going to start off by showing my heart. So have a look at my timeline. For this first second, it's going to show the heart. And then from here, it's going to transition into a tree. And then it's going to show the tree for an entire second and pause. And then it's going to transition into a hand. And then it's going to show the hand for an entire second. So now I've got it set for exactly five seconds of animation. 
Next, I need to break down how I want each one of these to transition. If I look at my timeline, I'm going to zoom in so I can see it better. So between turning a heart into a tree, I want it to look like the heart is melting and then reforming itself back into a tree. To do this, I need to work within this one second time span. So I know, I'll turn on the onion skin in so I can see it a little bit better. I'll bring this in. Bear with me a second, let's bring in the other side too. So I know that we're going from a heart to a tree shape. What is it going to look like in between? So I'm in between on my timeline, the one and two seconds, and I want it to be kind of a puddle. So that will be this particular keyframe right here. Then I can think about, well, what is it going to look like to go between a heart and a puddle? So I can put my cursor between both of those, and then maybe I can show kind of this, actually, let's turn on my onion skinning. I can use my onion skin as a guideline, and I can show, maybe it'll look like it's coming down from here. So it's almost forming into a puddle. And then I can break down everything in between there. Now I don't have to animate it at this point. I'm simply wanting to give myself a guideline to work through. If I turn off my onion skinning, you can see it goes from a heart to melting down to completely melted. Now I'm between being completely melted and coming back up to a tree. If this is the case, I'm going to insert a blank keyframe. Oops, excuse me. And from here, we'll turn on my onion skinning. And I simply need to draw off what does it look like becoming a puddle into a tree. So maybe it'll be halfway formed up, kind of blobulous there, and the puddle comes up. So now I got a good idea of what this should look like. If anything, maybe I can draw the heart starting to go in between both of those. So now it's starting to really come down. There we go. So let's have a look. Heart starts to melt down into a puddle, then form back up into a tree. It's going to stay a tree for a second, and we can repeat the same process, going from a tree into a hand. In this case, I'm working in this span in between both of those, so I'll choose the middle frame. And then from here, I can turn on my onion skin to see what it looks like between both of those objects. For this, I want it to kind of explode apart and then come back together. So if it's going to explode, what does the explosion look like? What is the farthest point or the longest um, extreme look like? So if it's exploding, maybe there will be these little bits kind of all around. I'll have some action lines go out. and then it's going to reform back into a hand. So now I can think about what does it look like between being a tree and exploding. I can turn on my onion skinning on my timeline and between both of those. So in this case, maybe the little pieces are still closer together. And not so much is happening. And then from here, it explodes out. And then I can think about what does it look like between being exploded and then drawing itself back in. Now, if that's the case, I'm going to have some of the pieces. We'll turn on my onion skinning so I can see both the explosion in here. Some of the pieces are going to be formed slightly into fingers. And some of the pieces are going to be forming slightly more into pieces of a hand. So something like this. And I want to have action lines going inward in this case. Now I can return to my timeline. And again, it's going to start off as a tree. And maybe I'll bring this over and just do an F5 to, oops, excuse me, I'll clear away this blank keyframe. So right click, clear keyframe. So it goes from being a tree to exploding and reforming back in to a hand. And then it will remain a hand for five seconds. Now that I've got my storyboard established, I can zoom back out and see the whole thing. 
And when I play it, this will give me an idea of the pacing that it takes to do each of the different transitions that I'm working from. If I need more time, I can always go to my timeline and I can add more frames in between each of these key moments or take it away if I need less time. I'm thinking I'd need a little bit more time for the explosion. So I'm going to go down to my timeline and from here I'm simply going to do F5 and increase the amount of time between that. So as I play it, give it some more time to go out and reform itself. This will go down and come back together and set it for that. I'm liking the look of it, so I'm going to go to my storyboard layer and lock it down. Now we can start bringing in our different objects. To do this, I'm going to bring my playhead all the way back to my first frame, and this is where I want to bring in my heart. I'm going to create a new layer, and for now I'm simply going to call it my heart layer. Now if you're working exclusively in Animate, there's nothing wrong with working directly in this first keyframe to draw off exactly the way your heart looks and only use the tools that are here. So I can use my paintbrush tool, my fill tool, my uh, shapes tools to be able to draw off and create whatever shape that you have. That's okay. However, if you have created something in Adobe Illustrator like I have, Here's how you can copy and paste it over and turn it into some workable objects. For in my case, I'm going to select my heart layer, just the heart itself. There it is. We'll go up to Edit and Copy. Let's jump back into Animate. With the first frame selected, I'm going to zoom in so I can see a little bit better. There we go. With the first frame selected on the heart layer, I can go up to Edit and I can paste it right in the center. Now when you paste it in, it's going to give you this warning. We want to bring this in as an Illustrator file importer preferences. So don't bring it in as a bitmap. And go ahead and apply the recommended settings and maintain your layers. We'll say OK. And this will place it directly inside of our object. Now notice what Illustrator has done. When you bring it in, especially if you've got multiple different objects that make up your, your um, illustration that you've created, it's going to bring them in as two separate symbols. It's got a blue bounding box around each, and it allows you to choose and select them. There is a slight problem with this, however. If I go to want to distort these, or especially erase them away and paint on top of them, I can't do that because it's treating these as solid objects rather than editable objects. So if I want to be able to edit these, I'll zoom in, I need to select each one, right click on it, and tell it to break apart. When you break it apart, now you no longer have the outside bounding box, and you can go in and you can make changes to it. Things like changing the fill color, clicking on the edges of it, or even using your eraser and painter tools to add to and take away from it. And in my case, that's what I want to do so I can edit these and transition them away. Let's do the same for, in my case, the orange part. So I'll select it, right click or control click, and choose break apart. And now it's on its own individual layer as one solid object. The final thing you may need to do is whenever you paste it in, notice that it changed it to a different layer name. So I'm going to go back and rename this my heart and place it inside of here. Now I'm going to do the same thing for each of my other two objects. Again, go to your timeline, make a new timeline for your second object, and then I'm going to go on my time to where it needs to appear. In this case, it's going to start right at the two second mark to appear. On my heart timeline, this is where I can insert a blank keyframe because I want to get rid of it altogether. So from here, we'll right click and insert a blank one. And then we'll select the layer for my tree. And let's copy and paste in my tree. So select it, Command C to copy, and then animate, paste in center. We'll say OK. And while I'm here, I'm also going to scale it up and place it right where it needs to be. Do remember to hold down the Shift key as you scale it to make sure everything stays nice and proportional. With that done, you can right click on each of your objects if you need to and break it apart. Let's do the same for this one, break that apart too. And now I can edit those. 
Going down to my timeline, I'm going to call this my tree layer. And I'm going to create one more layer for my third one. Scrolling down and moving on my timeline, I can see it's going to reform into a hand by this keyframe. So selecting it, on my tree layer, I want it to stop being visible here. So I'm going to choose to insert a blank keyframe. Then on my hand layer, my new layer, this is where I'm going to copy and paste this object into. So select my hand, copy it, paste it in. I want to scale it up so that it fits nicely. and then right click on everything to break it apart. Oop, take it one thing at a time though. There we go. Now with each of these done, you can go back, you can make any edits and changes to the initial key moment stages, and then we can start focusing on the transitional stages. Going down to my timeline, I'm going to call this my hand layer, and I like to have my storyboard on top of everything. So I'm going to drag it so that's on top so I can always see it and know exactly where I want things to be. Now that I've got my document and storyboard established, I can focus on doing all of the animation sequences between each of my different objects. And let's do that in a separate video.